One of the problems is insufficient randomness. So you may have seen tutorials where they use functions like rand or mtrand or unique ID. Those just simply aren't good enough. They're not going to give you the, le the level of cryptographical security that you need in order to generate a token that is hard for a hacker to try and recreate. And if you look, if you look at the manual pages for all of those, those functions in PHP, they say right on there, if you're trying that these aren't cryptographically secure, if you're using this for some sort of security thing, you shouldn't use it. There's a lot of developers who have a lot of opinions about what you need to do this coding thing for a living and be good at it. But I often find that their opinions tend to be better for them than they are for you. And that's part of the reason why I created this podcast. To cut through the crap and give it to you straight. And you won't always like me. You won't always agree with me. But I will tell you the truth. I'm John Morris, and welcome to The John Morris Show. Now let's quit the yakking and get to it. Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. Welcome back to another episode of The John Morris Show. This one we're going to get into securing your login forms with cryptographically secure tokens. So we're going to get into why that matters, why you would even want to do that, and it is actually uh, very important. And then some of the problems that you face when you go about doing that, and then ultimately the things that you need to do uh, in order to do that. Now before I do that, this actually all came up because of the recent course that I just did um, on a login script tutorial and in creating the the uh, password reset and the remember me feature in those two particular instances and there's others besides this but in those two particular instances needed uh, tokens and wanted to make sure that those were cryptographically secure that we were doing everything we could for security uh, in that sense so that's how this all first came up and why, why I'm even kind of talking about this now if you want to uh, take that course you can head on over to uh, johnmorrisonline.com slash login script it's all one word and and you can get access to that course there in the course not only show you how to do the tokens and actually use them in uh, context of a, of a login script but also just building the whole login script setting up your database preventing sql injection all those sorts of things uh, hashing passwords everything that you need to do to let users register log in and and secure and lock it all down so again that's johnmorrisonline.com slash login script you can learn more about that course the other thing before i get into this uh i want to i want to ask you kind of the question of the day here but and i'm, and I'm probably going to start doing this in in all the episodes going for forward but i want to hear from you what are you struggling with most right now because i really do want to focus on the sort of things that you're dealing with you're trying to get through whether it's code wise career wise life wise Whatever it is, what is it that you're struggling with uh, most right now? And, and and let me know that, and I'll see if I can and help you out with that with, with future episodes and so forth. So, again, that's the question of the day. If you are watching on YouTube, just leave it in the comments. Otherwise, if you're on the audio version, you can just shoot me an email at support at johnmorrisonline.com. All right, so with all that out of the way, let's get into this. So, the first, I think, big question is why Why does this matter? Why, why do we care about this sort of thing? Why should we do it? So again, there are different scenarios when you're coding where you need to generate some sort of token that is, is oftentimes it's going to be something that can be seen publicly. So maybe you're, or, or could potentially be. So you are storing it in a cookie, for example, with the remember me feature or you are sending it out in an email to a user and if their email account is hacked and all that sort of thing. So you have these different scenarios where you're going to be generating these tokens that you're going to be using and you want to make sure that those aren't just, they're, that they're hard to to for someone to try and brute force. We're going to, again, uh, we'll talk about this, we're going to get in some hashing so that there's some hashing on them and they're a little bit harder to crack and so forth. So there's just scenarios where we want to make sure when we're generating these tokens that are going to allow, again, in this case, allow someone to 
reset their password or be automatically logged back in in through a cookie, we want to make sure that those tokens are uh, are difficult for a hacker to to try and replicate in order to hack our system. And so we want making them cryptographically secure is how you do that. So again, like I said, for this particular scenario, this was. Uh, coming, this was for the remember me and the password reset. And those essentially, and again, I go into that in that, in that course, but these are essentially allow, allowing backdoor access into your system. You're allowing someone in uh, without, without them knowing the password. In the case of a remember me feature, they're not entering the password at all. In the case of the password reset, you're allowing them to change the password. So it's a scenario where you're allowing someone in who does not know the password. And so you're not doing any sort of that, any of that sort of verification. So it's really, really important uh, that these are as secure as possible. And plenty of tutorials out there don't really cover it or the way that they cover it, it's not as secure as it could be or it's using outdated methods. I did a login script tutorial about 10 years ago where I didn't do a good job of it. So uh, again, I want to go through this and, and, and show you how to do that. And that's why it matters. So what are some of the problems or the things that you should look out for uh, when it comes to this sort of thing? There's, there's really kind of two. And I should preface this by saying, and I'll link in the show notes page, johnmorrisshow.com slash 240. There are uh, several articles that I use as source for when I was doing this, and I'll link to all those. There's a big one by the Paragon Initiative that talks about secure, authentic uh, secure authentication and long-term persistence, and I highly recommend reading that article. A lot of what we're talking about here is drawn from that. So um, again, I'll link to that in the show notes page. But one of the problems is insufficient randomness. So you may have seen tutorials where they use functions like RAND or MT RAND or unique ID. Those just simply aren't good enough. They're not going to give you the, le the level of randomness uh, and cryptographical security that you need in order to generate a token that is hard for a hacker to try and recreate. So, and if you look if you look at the manual pages for all of those those functions in PHP, they say right on there, if you're trying that these aren't cryptographically secure, if you're using this for some sort of security thing, you shouldn't use it. And then it gives you a list of different uh, PHP functions that you can use. So insufficient random, randomness is a problem. Another one is timing leaks. And we're going to talk about how to get around that. But, you know, if you store a a token and you don't use, I'll call it a selector validator setup, um, and you allow someone to just query for the token, the the, the token that's going to let them in directly, the, the queries can leak timing information due to the way that strings are compared in, in database operations. So basically, it gets a little complicated, but basically attacker can change some specific characters in the token and get the comparison to fail just slightly faster. And as a result of that, be able to make it so that uh, being able to, to brute force or regenerate that token um, happens a little, they can actually get it to where it's computa uh, computationally possible for them to, to figure it out, even though you're, you are still using a cryptographically secure token. So you have the timing issues uh, with that. Now that hack is not something that's easy to do. But again, as they say on the, the article over on Paragon Initiative, it doesn't make sense to create a system, however small the hole may be, it doesn't make sense to create a system that has a hole in it. So we're going to do everything we can to, to sort of get around that. So Again, what can we do? What should you be doing here? So as the title applies, and I mentioned, you should be creating cryptographically secure tokens. So there's a few met functions that are available, but the one I'm just going to kind of point you to is one called random bytes. So it's random underscore bytes. Now, this is a new function in PHP 7. And what it is designed to do specifically is create these cryptographically secure tokens. That's what the function is for. And so that's what the one you should use. Now, if you're on earlier versions of PHP for some reason and you can't get to PHP 7, there is also a polyfill that you can use and it's called random compat. And so again, on the show notes page, 
johnmoyershow.com slash 240. I will link to all of these sources there. So you'll be able to find that polyfill, the, the information about random bytes and all that sort of thing. So when you're generating tokens, whenever you're generating tokens, you should be using random bytes. That's the first thing. The second thing is in dealing with the timing leaks, you want to use a selector and validator setup. So basically what that does is it sets up the uh, separates the lookup for the token from the actual verification of the token and it's a just a really simple way to prevent timing issues from affecting uh, the verification so again that that's as simple as when you are creating a, a table in your database where you're going to store these let's say uh, remember me uh, auth token you're going to store those in there instead of just storing the token that you're going to then check the cookie against, you wanna store a selector first and then the token. And then when you query uh, for a particular, to, to verify a particular token, you don't query for the token, you actually query for the selector, okay? And then you pull the, the rest of the information from that record and then you can validate the token that way. So you separate those two so that you avoid those timing issues. Another thing that you do is you hash the token when you put it in the database. So you don't just store it directly into the database. You hash it, hash it first so that even if your database gets compromised, the, the tokens aren't just stored directly in there. It's kind of like when uh, hashing a password in a way because the password is the thing that's going to let you into the system. In this particular case, the token is the thing that's going to let you into the system so we don't store it directly. We hash it so that there's still uh, work that the hacker has to do. They don't just immediately have access to all of these tokens and can instantly log into all these people's accounts. They have to actually go through and try and crack those hashes. So we we hash that token before we put it into the, the uh, database. <clears throat> the other thing that we do is we use hash equals. So this is a, a PHP function that is available as of PHP 5.6. And basically what it is is a timing safe string comparison op uh, operation. So when you, uh, in this, again, we'll just say remember me as an example. When you grab the the token that's in the cookie from the, or grab the token from the cookie that is stored in the browser that you're gonna use to allow the uh, somebody through your, your login system and the password check, you grab that and then you grab what's stored in the database and you're gonna see if the two match, you can use hash equals and that is a timing safe comparison. So again, you're not vulnerable uh, to any sort of timing attacks. And again, that has a polyfill as well if you're on earlier versions earlier than 5.6. So, and again, I'll link to all that in the show notes page. So to recap all of this, I know this is a lot of technical stuff kind of <laughs> thrown at you, but to recap, there's kind of, like seven bullet points here that I'll just run through. So any token you generate that needs to, uh, any token you generate needs to be, uh, uh, that needs to be secure from cracking needs to do this, needs to use uh, random bytes. So uh, RAND, empty RAND, unique ID, those are not enough. Um, timing attacks, while they're hard to do, are still possible. So you need to use random bytes. You need to use a selector and a validator, not just a single token. And you need to hash the validator in your database. And finally, you need to use hash equals to further prevent timing attacks. So those are like the seven bullet points of, of how to make sure that you're being as secure as possible here. So again, that's a lot thrown at you. Like I said, if you want to dive into this further, uh, that's what we do inside of that login script tutorial. I show you how to do this in two different scenarios, uh, a remember me feature and also a, um, a password reset feature, a password reset via email feature. And the thing about it is, is once you see it and, and you're actually able to go through it and do it, you'll see that the difference between how you do it with remember me and the difference between how you do it with an email, I mean, there are some differences, but it's not it's not dramatically different. So once you get it and see it and know how to do it, then all the other scenarios where you might use this sort of thing, you can a lot easier. You can apply it to those scenarios without too much extra, you know, too much extra that you have to learn. Because once you get it, you just sort of get it. So 
Again, if you want to take a look at that, that's johnmorrisonline.com slash login script. But again, whatever you do, make sure that you're you're following these best practices. You're using cryptographically secure tokens. You're using selectors and validators so that you can avoid timing tax. You're using hash equals. You're using random bytes, all those sort of things. And really pay attention to this stuff because a lot of times these scenarios, especially with a remember me and a password reset, you're you're create you are you are creating a backdoor into your system and so you have to make that as secure as you possibly can all right that'll do it for this episode if you liked the episode be sure to like it subscribe if you haven't if you'd like all the past episodes you can go to johnmorrisshow.com you'll see all the past episodes all the links for subscribing to the podcast via android itunes rss all that's over there and if you'd like a copy of module 1 of my php course free you can head on over to johnmorrisshow.com and click on the Start Here link. That'll walk you through the instructions for uh, getting it. I ask that you rate and review the podcast, honest rate and review podcast uh, over on iTunes. But if you'll you'll do that, I'll give you module one of my PHP course. So again, johnmorrisshow.com, click on the Start Here link for that. All right, that'll do it for this episode. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time.